Good morning. And welcome to all who are here and all who are watching. We are pleased to have you join us in our Eucharistic celebration. There are two collections for this weekend, a regular collection and a debt reduction collection. Both can be placed in one of the three baskets around the church. As always, we thank you for your continued support. Thursday, November 19th, was the feast day of Blessed Grimwald. As we honor Blessed Grimwald this weekend, there is a flyer about Blessed Grimwald available on the table up in front and in the back of the church on the table. Please feel free to take one and learn more about him. Our Thanksgiving Mass will be celebrated here at 9 a.m. Please bring a non-perishable food item to donate to our food pantry. Please don't forget to register for our Advent mission that will take place on Sunday, December 5th from 12.30 until 4.30. Seating is limited. As we prepare ourselves, let us turn our attention to the altar, where the holy sacrifice of the Mass will be celebrated by Father Marticello, assisted by Deacon Joe Palacios. On this, the solemnity of our Lord Jesus Christ, King of the Universe. Let us 
acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things, and your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant, we pray, that the whole creation set free from slavery may render your majesty service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. As the visions during the night continued, I saw one like a son of man coming on the clouds of heaven. When he reached the ancient one and was presented before him, the one like a son of man received dominion, glory, and kinship. 
all the people, nations, and languages served him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not be taken away. His kingship shall not be destroyed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. indeed. Holiness befits your house, O Lord, for length of days. The Lord is King, He is loved in majesty. reading from the book of Revelations. Jesus Christ is the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, who has made us into his kingdom, priest for his God and Father, to him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming amid the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. All the people on earth will lament him. Yes, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, the one who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is to come. Alleluia, alleluia. My dear friends, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Pilate said to Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own, or have others told you about me? Pilate answered, I'm not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting. 
to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. So Pilate said to him, Then you are a king. Jesus answered, You say I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The Gospel of the Lord. My brothers and sisters in Christ, we have come to the end, the end and culmination of the liturgical year, and the Church crowns it with the great solemnity of Christ the King, which we celebrate today. It is because Christ has dominion over all time and seasons, all places and nations, all people and races. It is because Christ has absolute sovereignty over the entire cosmos and all of creation. The liturgical year begins with the first coming of Christ and it ends with his final coming. It is because all things begin with Christ and end with Christ. It is because he is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Everything belongs to Christ. He encompasses all, and nothing can escape from his supreme authority and governance. We are his subjects, every individual and every family, every culture and society, every nation and government. And since we are his subjects, the whole world ought to collectively recognize, as the Church does today, Christ's absolute sovereignty. All things come from him, and all things belong to him. Thus all should be subjected to him and his laws. For Christ, who is the Lord of heaven and earth and King of the universe, lives and reigns forever and ever. We hear all throughout scripture Christ's sovereignty prefigured and proclaimed. The psalmist says, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of your kingdom is a scepter of righteousness. And from the prophet Isaiah, in his days, justice shall spring up and abundance of peace. And he shall rule from sea to sea and from the river unto the ends of the earth. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His empire shall be multiplied, and there shall be no end of peace. He shall sit upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to establish it and strengthen it with judgment and with justice from this time forth and forevermore. And from the prophet Daniel, I saw with the clouds of heaven, there came one like a son of man, and to him was given dominion and glory and kingdom, that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom is one that shall never be destroyed. And at the fullness of time, the archangel announced to the Blessed Virgin Mary that she would bear a son and said, 
the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Our blessed Lord also affirms his sovereignty when his authority was questioned by Pilate. Jesus said to him, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have fought to prevent me from being handed over. And in the book of Revelation, St. John saw heaven opened, and the new Jerusalem, the kingdom of God, And he saw the Son of God, describing that, on his garment and on his thigh was written, King of kings and Lord of lords. And so, my friends, Christ is King, and he shall reign forever and ever. His kingdom is not of this world. However, It is eternal. Christ is a king who rules not from a golden throne, but from a wooden cross. He did not wear a crown of gold, but a crown of thorns. Christ came not to be served like worldly kings, but to serve like a slave. He is a king who did not seek to bring about political liberation from Roman rule and oppression, but a king who thirsted for souls and came to save humanity from sin and eternal death, to liberate humanity from the grasp of Satan. And his royal power does not consist of any army of men, horses and chariots, weapons and ammunition. The power of Christ is the power of love, divine love. It's the power which conquered and crushed his adversary when he hung and died upon the cross. It's the power which is possessed by the heavenly host of angels and the multitude of saints. It's the power which conquers all things because love conquers all things. And although we live under a form of government as citizens of a nation, St. Paul reminds us that our true citizenship is in heaven. By our baptism, we belong first to the kingdom of God. So regardless of who our earthly rulers might be, And regardless of the form of government we may live under, I have very good news for you. Jesus Christ is still King. Jesus Christ is still King of the universe. And so we should, as Christ says, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. But more importantly, We are to give to God what belongs to God. And if Caesar or the state infringes upon this sacred duty and obligation, our allegiance and obedience ought to be always directed to the higher authority of Almighty God. Our response should be the response that St. Peter and the other apostles gave the earthly authorities who tried preventing them from preaching the name of Jesus. In their response, they said, We must obey God rather than men. In other words, we must obey what Christ commanded us to do, to go forth, making disciples of all nations, baptizing them, and teaching them all of his statutes. And so let us be reminded today that our allegiance is to Christ first, then to our country or political party. 
we must always remember that our primary identity is in being a child of God and bearing the name Christian. Everything else is secondary. And so, my brothers and sisters, if Christ is the eternal King, and if we belong to him by virtue of our baptism, we then are his co-heirs, which means we too are royalty. We too are anointed by his sacred oil. This also means we belong in his ranks as soldiers for Christ. Every king has an army. And my friends, we are a part of Christ's army, his holy crusade, his sacred militia, because we are the mystical body of Christ, because we are his hands and feet in the world. We are the church militant on earth, joined with the church triumphant in heaven and the church suffering in purgatory. We have been entrusted as Christians to continue and to carry out Christ's saving mission for souls. And so how well are we fighting for our blessed Lord? How well are we making Jesus Christ known and loved in the world? How devoutly are we fighting for our divine King who wants to reign in the hearts of all? And I say fight because it is a fight, not against flesh and blood, but against powers of darkness and evil principalities, against the devil, the enemy of our salvation. Have we given Jesus the proper allegiance that is due to him with our lives? What banner do we fly and march under? The banner of sin or the banner of truth and love? Who do we fight for? Is it the world, ourselves, the devil, or do we fight for Jesus Christ, our sovereign Lord and King? Because, my friends, we are really only fighting for one of two kingdoms by the life we live. And whether we know it or not, we are either fighting for the kingdom of darkness or the kingdom of light, the kingdom of fear or the kingdom of love, the kingdom of lies or the kingdom of truth, the kingdom of revenge or the kingdom of forgiveness, the kingdom of pride or the kingdom of humility the kingdom of chaos, or the kingdom of peace, the kingdom of death, or the kingdom of life, the kingdom of sin, or the kingdom of grace, the kingdom of Satan, or the kingdom of God. And if we serve the kingdom of God sincerely, then Christ our King must reign over our hearts that we may love him ardently. He must reign over our minds, that we may always think of him and his word. And we must, he must reign over our wills, that we may do everything he has commanded us to do. He must reign as king in every aspect of our lives. And I mean literally every aspect. He must reign as king over our public life, as well as our private life. And my friends, there must be no duplicity in our hearts, for Christ cannot reign alongside of sin. And so we pray for Christ to reign in our world and in the hearts of all peoples and nations. We ought to fight the good fight as his loyal soldiers, and to strive to win over for our King those hearts 
that are bitter and estranged from him, those who do not know him nor love him. And together as one church, one body of Christ, we can advance and further the kingdom of God in the world by recommitting ourselves to our sovereign king through a solemn pledge of allegiance, through an act of consecration. And so today we will consecrate ourselves and the whole world to the most sacred heart of Jesus after Holy Communion, which was requested by Pope Pius XI when he instituted the Solemnity of Christ the King. And so upon this great feast, let us be filled with joy for our great King who has redeemed us. He is our Lord and Savior, the only one worthy of our praise and adoration, as it is he who gives meaning to our very existence. We live in a world where it is ever more difficult to profess openly that Christ is King. He is not only our King, but as this feast reminds us, he is the King of the universe, of history, of all space and time, of all created things, both visible and invisible. He is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Therefore, let us joyfully acclaim, today and forever, Christus vincit, Christus regnat, Christus imperat. Christ conquers, Christ reigns, Christ commands. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power, riches, wisdom, might, honor, glory, and blessing. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and then and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and was seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With faith, let us bring forth our prayers and petitions to the Lord. For the Church, the kingdom created by Jesus and the people who are made priests for his God and Father, that we may offer ourselves with him as an acceptable sacrifice, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all peoples, nations, and languages, that they may come to acknowledge the dominion of Jesus Christ, 
whose kingship is everlasting, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may welcome blessed, blessed Grimwald as a member of each of our families and, with his assistance, make our homes rich with Christian life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord, who has freed us from our sins by his holy blood, may bring all of his baptized people to repentance and reconciliation in the sacrament of penance, the fountain of joy and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Riley Joyce Gillette, Isla Jane Kem, and Aubrey Lee Smith, who will be baptized into our parish family this weekend. May they grow in the love and faith of the Catholic Church, inspired by their parents and godparents. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who labor under a burden of suffering or grief may have the grace to carry their cross bravely in the footsteps of the King and Kings and know his intimate consol consolation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Jesus, whose kingdom does not belong to this world, may bring all whom he has called through the gates of death into the heavenly glory where he is truly king forever, and especially for the living and deceased parishioners of our Mother of Sorrows and Holy Cross, from whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pause for a moment and make our own private petitions. We pray to the Lord. We unite these and all our poor prayers to those of the Immaculate Blessed Virgin Mary and speak them in the name of her Son, Jesus Christ, King of the universe, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Baptized in water, sealed by the Spirit, cleansed by the blood of Christ our King. Heirs of salvation, trusting his promise. Baptized in water, sealed by the Spirit, dead in the tomb with Christ our King, one with His rising, freed and forgiven. Thankful he now God's praise we sing. Baptized in water, sealed by the Spirit, marked with the sign of Christ our King. Born of one Father, we are his children, joyful in our God's praise we
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise of the Lord of God, for our good of all God's holy church. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness as eternal priest and king of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption and making all created things subject to his rule, he might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the host and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, 
Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Story of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, 
the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them. Fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and within him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of power and the glory of Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. 
Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Now in a safe way, let us offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Those who work in the dark are thankful for the sunlight. We who live, we who die are grateful for this gift. Thankful for God's love. Oh, all who dwell in 
the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself with you wholly. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glorying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Before we pray that act of consecration to the Sacred Heart of Jesus, I'd just like to remind all of you again that this past week we celebrated Blessed Grimwald's Feast Day, and um, who of course has uh, special ties to this parish of Holy Cross, and whose relative is here today, Iris, if I'm correct. So he, 
Blessed Grismal was your great uncle, is that correct? So there are special ties to this parish. We thank God for raising up a great saint to pray for us and for our parish. And so you may come forward and venerate his relic that is displayed there with that beautiful statue and pray for his intercession. Thank you. Please kneel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Most sweet Jesus, Redeemer of the human race, look down upon us humbly prostrate before your altar. We are yours, and yours we wish to be. But to be more surely united to you, behold, each one of us freely consecrates ourselves today to your most holy, sacred heart. Many indeed have never known you, Many, too, despising your precepts, have rejected you. Have mercy on them all, most merciful Jesus, and draw them to your sacred heart. Be king, O Lord, not only of the faithful children who have never forsaken you, but also of the prodigal children who have abandoned you. Grant that they may quickly return to their father's house, lest they die of wretchedness and hunger. Be king of those who are deceived by erroneous opinions or whom discord keeps aloof, and call them back to the harbor of truth and unity of faith, so that there may be but one flock and one shepherd. Grant, O Lord, to your church assurance of freedom and immunity from harm. Give peace and order to all nations, and make the earth resound from pole to pole with one cry, praise to the divine heart that wrought our salvation. To it be glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.